Hey, welcome back to the low action. We've got an awesome video for you today. Today we're going to check out the Phil Jones BG75 bass double four amplifier, little practice amp. Um, I discovered this thing online and when I was looking for a, a cool little amp to, to have on my desk and the technology behind this thing is freaking insane. Uh, it is just the coolest little thing ever, so we're going to go over all of this and give it a listen. Check it out. It'll be cool. Stick around. So, under my desk, uh, where I kept my bass amp, I had a Fender Rumble 25, um, down there for a while, and, um, I... I'm a fan of the Fender Rumble series. If you're looking for a, a little practice amp, you're a bass player, you want a little practice amp for at home, um, for $99, that amp cannot be beat. It is, in my opinion, the best sounding $99 bass amplifier ever. Um, but what had happened was, uh, I was redoing my desk, um, and I wanted to get the bass amp out from underneath it. And I wanted something that I can put up on top. So I was looking at smaller things, and uh, nothing really appealed to me. Um, either it sounded terrible, I play a lot of five strings, couldn't find anything that can handle the low B. Um, I, I was just having a hard time finding something that sounded good that I enjoyed using um, that would fit on my desk. Uh, enter Phil Jones bass. Uh, Phil Jones is known for making high quality bass amplifiers um, and they're tiny in tiny packages they because they're handmade and, and the quality of them they tend to be a little pricey but they started introducing smaller lines smaller amplifiers and of course at a smaller price tag um, this one here the BG75 the bass double four this is a relatively new model for them and to date, this is the smallest amplifier that they have made. Um, the specs on this thing are incredible. When you start reading about it, um, you understand why, are, why they are priced the way they are. Uh, the price tag on this amplifier is around $479. Uh, a lot, pretty pricey for a small, tiny little amp. Um, but the technology they put into it is the reason for that. And you're also looking at 70 watts in this package that is literally not much bigger than a shoebox and only weighs 6 pounds, 7 pounds, uh, something like that. The uh, cabinet is kind of interesting. They have a nice wood cabinet, and they sprayed it with like a, uh, I don't know, like a epoxy paint. This is like the stuff they use in like... Um, pickup truck bed liners. I guess he couldn't get any corner pieces that were small enough, so rather than a Tolex, uh, you have this white epoxy paint stuff, which I think looks pretty cool. This is a 70-watt bass amplifier, and how it works is there are two separate 35-watt amplifiers, one for each of the 4-inch four four uh, neodymium drivers. And uh, what they do is they run up into the, the preamp section, the preamp section is actually run by a little microprocessor computer, and that, that takes care of your bass, mid, treble, controls, and things like that. Um, the cool thing about that is, is that you can use a laptop battery type thing. Um, the DC power input uh, is similar to that of a laptop, so you can use a laptop battery and make this amp battery powered, should you feel like that's something you want to do. Um, so across the top, the controls, uh, you have your input jack. You've got a little three-way switch, which is mute, low, and high, um, with a little clip light to tell you if you're, you've got too much gain and you're, you're overdriving the amplifier. But then your low and your high would be for passive basses or active basses. You have an input level, which is like a gain, uh, bass, boost and cut, mid boost and cut and treble boost and cut and on each of those knobs you're either boosting or cutting 18 decibels uh, you have your master volume 
an auxiliary input if you wanted to play along with like a CD, uh, iPod, computer, something like that, and then a level for that so you can make that uh, equal volume to your, your bass or whatever's going in. Uh, you have your headphone jack, so you can run it with headphones, and you have a line out. You have the DC input and then the on and off switch. So it's pretty basic across the, uh, the top panel. Um, there's really no bells or whistles on here that you're not going to get on any other amplifier. It's just the technology behind it that um, kind of makes it a little special. Each of these 4-inch speakers is fed with its own pulse width modulation, or PWM, amplifier. PWM amplifiers are extremely efficient compared to traditional analog solid-state amplifiers, converting electrical energy to power using on the speakers instead of just wasting it on the amp running hot. By using dual amplifiers, one on each speaker, the bass control is greatly improved, since the dampening factor, the, which is the amplifier's ability to kind of put on the brakes to stop the speakers from overloading, the dampening factor is doubled. The end result, a bass tone that is well-controlled, punchy, tight, and never muddy or boomy. Because this cabinet is so tiny, it's literally just a little bigger than a shoebox, they designed a custom rectangular auxiliary low-frequency radiator, it's a pneumatically coupled radiator loaded behind the 4-inch speakers, and it operates the lowest bass frequency only. It augments the output of the loudspeakers at frequencies from 30 to 150 hertz. It also re reduces the cone excursion of the speakers, so your power handling is increased. The cabinet on the inside is braced internally and lined with acoustic dampening materials. This prevents the cabinet from causing coloration that can interfere with the true tone of your bass. Is it as loud as a 70 watt amp should be? No. And I, and I think that's because of the, uh, the tiny speakers. I actually think my Rumble 25 was way louder than this, but it had a bigger speaker. I think that's a 10 inch speaker versus the 4 inch speakers here. Um, but you do not get that small speaker tinty sound that you would get from other amplifiers. It does kind of have a, a fuller, richer sound. Um, was it worth the $479? I think so. I, I enjoy this amplifier. I've, I've done a lot of guitar videos with it, or bass videos, I should say, with it. I enjoy it, and it sits on my desk on, a, on an old crate... Um, so it's up, it's out of the way. It's just an awesome piece of machinery. Um, so we're going to give it a listen. The first clip you're going to hear, um, played a little riff with my uh, Roscoe five string, uh, and I went direct in from the line out, direct into my uh, DAW. And the second clip, I'm using a five string jazz bass, and I set uh, just a cheap Scarlett uh, CM25 Mark II microphone in front of the speakers and then right into my DAW. So let's give it a listen. Thank you. 
So that was my little Phil Jones BG75 bass double four amplifier. Pretty sweet. The stuff that they do is remarkable. They, they cram 100, 200 watt uh, amplifiers in these tiny little packages and it's just the greatest thing. Um, especially if you're you know playing on smaller stages, you're limited for space. Um, one thing that I do not like about Phil Jones is their amps tend to be underpowered. Um, if you are gigging like outdoor gigs or playing larger venues, there's, they don't offer much for you. Um, they're usually 100, 200 watts. They do have an 800 watt head, but the cabinet that matches that is not very small. It's a little smaller than what you would normally get from other brands, but it's 70 pounds. So, And then you're getting into you know, the $1,000 to $2,000 range for your cabinets and your amplifiers and stuff. Uh, so anybody that I know that are like working musicians aren't really going to drop that kind of coin. So, um, but if you're looking for like an interesting practice stamp, um, I think they're definitely worth the money. Uh, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you